The Wuhan coronavirus is spreading around the world and raising fears of a global outbreak. The number of people infected and the death toll is increasing by the day. Coronavirus cases have been found in other places out of Wuhan, Hubei province, indicating the epidemic is expanding. Concerns are mounting. It is inevitable that people will cut their trips during the spring festival and holiday, consumption is being hit badly. Death toll climbs to 170 from 132, with 7,771 cases confirmed in China and 7,811 total, while the number of suspected cases has soared by 2,928 to 12,167 from 9,239 yesterday. Entire swaths of the country have been shut down. Starbucks has closed more than half its outlets. Toyota announced it will close its plants, and Google says it will temporarily close all of its Chinese offices. British Airways cancelled flights to China. Russia is the latest country to partially restrict travel with China. Germany's Lufthansa and American Airlines are the latest airlines to suspend flights to China. Also, one thing that China is hiding is the number of death caused by the virus. Credible Chinese media outlet Anidium News interviewed people working at local cremation centers, confirming that many dead bodies were sent directly from the hospitals to the cremation centers without properly identifying these patients, which means there are patients who died from the virus but not adding to the official record. That shows the current death toll of 133 that we are seeing is way too low. So there are reasons to remain skeptical about what China has been sharing with the world because while they have been more transparent about certain things related to the virus, they continue to be sketchy and unreliable in other aspects. No one really, with two brain cells to rub together believes anything the Chinese government is saying or that the real numbers are anything close to being as low as what they claim. China is clearly lying about the numbers of sick and dead according to every conceivable metric and multiple leaked reports from medical personnel. It'll get worse, as you know. Current numbers are largely Chinese fabrication. Thailand, India, and others will probably be more inclined to report it more accurately if they are able. And anyone who thinks the fatality percentage is 2% is a knucklehead. Lancet says 11% and lots of deaths aren't being reported. Probably closer to 20. Better medical care in the West might lower that a lot but it's still gonna be around 5 at least. Of course, the Chinese officials are lying about the actual number of infections and deaths. What idiot would actually believe any government trying to avoid a pandemic panic in a nation of 1.3 billion people? Looking at the numbers alone. We are to believe there are only 12,167 suspected cases and only 7,771 confirmed cases in Wuhan, a city of approximately 11.1 million people? The province of Hubei, which is home to Wuhan, has a population of approximately 58.5 million people. We are being told this virus is airborne, with human-to-human -human transmission confirmed, and a mortality rate north of 4%. The suspected cases rose by 2,928 overnight which would be a approximately 24.1% increase. Those types of increased percentages indicate a pandemic event occurring. So yes, just on the numbers alone, the Chinese government is lying about the gravity of the situation. Some researchers are saying there are actually several variations of this virus, not only one, as has been claimed before. So either it is mutating faster than they thought, or several different viruses were leaked out of that biological lab in Wuhan. Perhaps this is why the governments are freaking out. On his radio show tonight, Hal Turner just claimed that the virus is a mixture of SARS and coronaviruses created by the People's Liberation Army of China under something called the Nanking Command. Also, leakers from within China say the government is preparing to defend 11 cities in a worst-case scenario if the coronavirus collapses China. Basically, they have a plan in place to let the rest of the nation collapse but for those 11 cities. The audio was posted on Twitter. There might be a mass migration of several tens of millions of Chinese to Europe if that happens. Maybe even a Chinese civil war. That many hungry people will storm castles if they have to eat. China is now collapsing faster than Utah's housing market. This is going to get worse folks. I'm getting the feeling something really big is about to happen. Welcome to the Atlantis Report. The last days of the first month of 2020 appear complicated for the world economy under pressure from the effects of the coronavirus and the imminent exit of Great Britain from Europe.
The last week of January promises to be challenging for the markets, under pressure from the impact of Chinese pneumonia, the impeachment of Donald Trump, the Fed meeting, the official launch of Brexit three years after the referendum, the last meeting of the Bank of England before the departure of Governor Mark Carney and the US GDP figure in the fourth quarter release. China has shut down all its stock markets until the virus is contained. Then we have the Trump impeachment going on. The impeachment of Donald Trump will continue this week. There are two main accusations against him. Abuse of power towards relations with Ukraine and obstruction of Congress investigations. Then we have the Fed's FOMC meeting on January 28-29. The FOMC, the Fed's Monetary Policy Committee, meets on January 28-29. Analysts don't expect any rate decisions for Wednesday night. President Jerome Powell will look forward to developments in the situation for this early 2020, which promises to be fairly calm after the US-China deal on Phase 1. However, there is an expectation for what he will say about the effects of the Chinese virus on the economy. In 2019, the Fed has already cut rates three times, despite the good performance of the US economy. This week will also see the last meeting of Mark Carney's Bank of England. The Bank of England monetary policy meeting next week will be the last one led by Governor Mark Carney, whose term expires in March, and before London's official farewell to the EU. Carney said earlier this month that the Bank of England will delay any hike in interest rates until inflation is well above its target, but analysts are divided between those who don't rule out a scissor cut right away and who is convinced that Carney will leave this decision to his successor Andrew Bailey, who will take over on March 16. And then we have Brexit with London's farewell to the EU next Friday. Brexit will stop being announced next Friday and the United Kingdom will officially leave the European Union more than three years after the referendum. The withdrawal law removed the last parliamentary obstacle and received royal consent from Queen Elizabeth II last week. Now there is only the approval of the European Parliament. An 11-month transition will begin next week which will keep the trade and security relations between London and Brussels unchanged, pending the final negotiation on Brexit. And still again we have the first data on US GDP which will arrive from the USA next Friday in the fourth quarter. Economists expect the economy to grow 2.1% annually, weighed down by lower consumer spending and reduced commercial activity. Then we have the coronavirus that still weighs on the markets. The Chinese virus does not cease to frighten the global markets, even if for experts this contagion, which so much resembles SARS and whose spread has been expanded by the great traffic of travelers of the Chinese New Year, should be short-lived because its impact it is more psychological than real. At the moment, however, the escalation of infections and victims is strong. In China, there are 2,500 infected and 80 dead. Just for some reference, the Spanish flu took roughly four to six months to become a pandemic. The Beijing authorities extended the holidays for the lunar year, the Chinese New Year until February 2 and closed the main offices to avoid further spread of the coronavirus in the offices. Furthermore, it is estimated that the economy of the dragon could suffer and fall, at least for a quarter, under 6% of growth, with repercussions on the oil price and on the export of numerous goods, in particular, luxury goods. This is now the biggest quarantine on human history, the virus has an asymptomatic transmission, meaning transmission happens even when people seem healthy with zero symptoms. On 27 January 2020, gold to paper ratio and silver to paper ratios have been removed from the real-time national debt clock and replaced with the cost of college tuition, a wealth of the 1% versus the bottom 50%, cryptos versus dollars, and automobile price increases. Gold and silver off the screen? At a time when I'm reading that a cure for cancer has been found and a new coronavirus hits humanity and the Fed is in trouble. Really? I'm getting the feeling something really big is about to happen. The virus is spreading quickly and the world is on edge. So the new type of coronavirus that first appeared in Wuhan late last month continues to claim more victims. As of Wednesday morning, at least 132 people have died in China, and 105 of them are from Wuhan. The number of confirmed cases in China has soared to near 6,000, with more than half of them in Wuhan. Shanghai and the Chinese capital Beijing has reported deaths from the virus as well. Beijing confirmed on Monday a 50-year-old man died of respiratory failure, and Shanghai said on Sunday an 88-year-old man died. Experts in China say the outbreak is forecast to worsen.
The head of a team of experts at China's National Health Commission said on Tuesday that the coronavirus will reach its peak infection rate in 7 to 10 days. However, he added, there will be no large scale growth after that. The virus is also continuing to spread to other parts of the world. The virus is popping up across the world, with more confirmed cases being reported every day. At least 17 countries and territorial entities outside mainland China have now reported confirmed cases. Luckily, no deaths from the coronavirus have been reported other than in China so far. France on Tuesday confirmed its fourth case in an elderly Chinese tourist. France's health ministry said the patient, who is hospitalized in Paris, is believed to be about 80 years old and is gravely ill. Japan and Germany have both confirmed cases from patients who have never been to Wuhan. Japan has at least seven confirmed cases, and the first confirmed patient, a male bus driver in his 60s, has not been to Wuhan, but drove two groups of Chinese tourists from Wuhan earlier this month. Germany has now at least four confirmed patients, and the country's first confirmed patient, a 33 year old German male, did not visit China but was in a meeting with a female Chinese national, who later turned out to be infected. Thailand has at least 14 diagnosed with the disease. Having the most confirmed patients outside of China. Thailand has announced plans to screen all arrivals from China for symptoms of the coronavirus. Hong Kong has at least eight confirmed cases. Hong Kong on Tuesday announced plans to slash cross border travel between the city and mainland China. The virus has also spread to North America. Canada confirmed its third case from a man in his 40s who visited Wuhan. In the US, at least five people are diagnosed with the disease, all of whom recently traveled from Wuhan. The White House official said it's considering suspending China flights, and United Airlines announced it is canceling dozens of China flights next month because of a decrease in demand for flights to China. The US also said it will expand screening of travelers arriving from Wuhan to 20 airports and land crossings, and is advising people to avoid non essential travel to any part of China. The European Commission said on Tuesday it would start helping repatriate Europeans from Wuhan on France's request. The South Korean, Japanese, American, French, and German governments are also sending chartered planes to repatriate their citizens stuck in Wuhan. I'm getting the feeling something really big is about to happen. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.